Are you prepared to see fleets of large trucks driving autonomously across our highways by the end of the decade? Well, hang on for this installment of All Things Automotive, where we go under the hood with Torque Robotics to look at how they leverage data to achieve this milestone. And then we'll look around the corner with some expert insight about the state of autonomy across our customers and how their technology stacks are evolving. Let's get trucking! Go on a cloud innovation journey with me, Stefano Marzani, as I'm joined by guest experts and mobility leaders to look at the drivers of transformation on all things automotive. Today I'm joined by Derek Johnson, Head of Data and Infrastructure at Torque Robotics, one of the leading companies in autonomous tracking. Welcome, Derek. If I'm not wrong, Torque was founded around 2005, so it's kind of a few years going back. So, and can you tell us a bit what are the core competences uh, in Torque? Absolutely. So we've been uh, developing autonomous vehicle technology for, for 17 years now, and we've had a variety of applications in mining and defense and also on-road autonomy. So our core competencies are in engineering and, and vehicle testing across these variety of applications. But now we're purely focused on that, that freight industry where, where safety is our, our highest priority. And we're trying to address the, the 40,000 deaths that occurred last year on, on the United States roads and accomplish this, this mission of making our roads a safer place. I'm frequently asked uh, when we are going to see autonomous vehicles on the road. And my answer is typically there's a lot that we can do with autonomy right now. And the first and foremost is saving lives. So that's such an important thing. So I love that. And what are the benefits of working with Torque? So we have a single OEM platform, the, the Daimler Trucks uh, Freightliner Cascadia, and we have a single business case that's, that's long haul, hub to hub freight, and uh, in a single environment on, on US highways. So it, it's a complex endeavor, uh, and we'll be expanding our, our product reach uh, only when we can prove its capabilities and safety. Yeah, even in this case, we see how the sector is maturing, right? It's always an ecosystem play. They're helping provide uh, strategic guidance and insight into the freight industry and how we can integrate uh, our autonomous freight product into a, a safe operation. I assume that you are collecting a lots of data, right? Uh, how, how do you manage that? How do you structure all that workflow? So like many businesses, we've, uh, we're leveraging the cloud for, for scale and flexibility. Um, and yeah, we're driving millions of miles and collecting terabytes per hour of data. Uh, it's, it's a big challenge that the cloud has really helped us to, uh, to, to improve upon. So we, we have two types of data. We have the real-time stream of like metadata, that's location information, route information, a status of our virtual driver software. And we're also recording our full fidelity sensor and algorithm results with a proprietary stack in vehicle that's really optimized for that recording of that volume. How do you leverage the cloud to build out your infrastructure? So we use it in, in, in a lot of ways, ultimately. Uh, all that streaming data I, I talked about, we use IoT Core, so it ends up directly in the cloud. And then in addition, all that high fidelity data that we're recording on vehicle, as, as these trucks come back into our operational centers, mm -hmm. we, we remove these, these cartridges of so SSDs. And they'll go in an upload station in the garage. Yeah, like ex that. exactly. And these stations, as soon as the connection is established, they upload it through Direct Connect, a really high bandwidth connection that we can get this really large volume of data off. And we've collected tens of petabytes at this point. We wouldn't have been able to build this kind of system uh, as quickly on an on-prem data center, just because the volume of data is so high. And as, as each of these files arrives in S3, uh, we index it. So it triggers metadata indexing. So it's the type of message that, that is being recorded, as well as like the time it was recorded, the vehicle it came from. And this allows us to run a service, a proprietary API behind API gateway that can uh, serve up snippets of the data. So just the, the types of data that are of interest and are very time-bound of interest for, for an engineer or for a replay task. And this could be used in, in simulation, uh, all sorts of applications. And this is to, to retrieve that data in the, in the same format that it was recorded on vehicle, which of course is really useful for testing our, our autonomy algorithms. Validation, a super interesting point. And uh, we see frequently from our customers that from this high-frequency raw data, 
that uh, goes and uh, transforms in a data lake concept, right? The data lake that is really able to serve these APIs to everybody in the organization. That's data scientists to train a model, uh, validation uh, folks to really test the system uh, and see the improvements, uh, data scientists. Uh, um, is that the case as well? Yeah, absolutely. So the limitation of, of the formats that we use to record on vehicle is they're not very queryable. It's really uh -huh. hard to identify across this really large volume of data. So in addition to these APIs that provide that raw data, we we break apart uh, some of it that we, we know the format already. Mm -hmm. And we write it back to, to Parquet, into, back into S3. And this allows engineers to query across all this data and join together different types of data. So perhaps location information is something we record. In addition, from our streaming data, we get weather information. Nice. And you can join across all of these different things with, with Athena. Uh, we also use uh, AWS Lake formation, and it helps govern like who, yeah. who can get access to this type yeah. of data. And uh, a quick question, are you using AWS Glue to do ETL, so extract transformation and loading of data as well? Yeah, so Glue uh, populates our data catalog with all this data that's coming off, off the vehicle. And it, it's also used for these analysis tasks, right? So yeah. that may happen much later in the pipeline uh, and, and gets written back. What are the key learnings? Well, we've been able to build faster by, by leveraging the cloud and, and building off of world-class services. And it's allowed us to focus on our specific problems and that, that data volume and uh, querying across this large amount of data. It's been so much easier using these technologies. Yeah. Uh, one question on the organization, right? So in 2019, you joined the Daimler Trucks, a big traditional OEM in the space. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it that going? How you manage the challenges and opportunities coming from that? Uh, from that, we're leveraging each other's strengths, and and Torque is the first uh, first company to partner with an OEM truck manufacturer, and we've been developing this autonomous te technology for seventeen years, and safety critical applications. And of course, uh, Daimler has an enormous amount of experience in in building trucks. I was in yeah. uh, Stuttgart uh, last month, and I was able to see Gottlieb Daimler's uh, production, the, the first truck, uh, created in 1896. Well, so, yes, yeah, just very long experience. <laughs> into exactly. that, I mean, that's, definitely. A, that's 120 years now. Wow. So, uh, And then the other thing we get from Daimler is uh, their, their relationships within the freight industry. So they have the partners that are helping us understand uh, freight networks and how we integrate our autonomous technology with them. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, partnering with a company that already has a relevant footprint in the industry for surely helps, right? Absolutely. It's been a great partnership. What's the strategy to scale out, right? It's not just anymore producing trucks. It's scaling out autonomy, right? We're focused on level four autonomy, and that's with, without an operator intervention, without human intervention, we need to deal with all of these scenarios that arise on, on U.S. highways. And that's you know, construction zones and potholes and, and complicated traffic edge scenarios. Cases. All the edge cases of the world. <laughs> That's right. So, but we're constraining it a little bit by only dealing with with hub to hub in very specific weather conditions. And we know our technology needs to be 100% safe before we release it to the market. That said, I, we think it's going to be possible to commercialize our technology within the decade. It's been awesome and very fascinating, touching uh, both architectural aspect as well as this uh, interesting story, really merging these two companies together. It's just very interesting. Thank you so much, Derek. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Hi, George. It's uh, such a pleasure having you here uh, in this uh, episode of All Things Automotive. Great to be here. You work with some of our most important customers out there. So it's just a phenomenal opportunity to hear their voice, right, uh, through your experience with them. We just had Torque here. Uh, one thing that struck me is that uh, they say that they will have a commercial service by the end of the decade, so less than eight years. So how do you see uh, across your customers, uh, you know, the level of matur the maturity of autonomy technology? Yeah, absolutely. So it's definitely maturing. And although level four technology is still developing, there are level two and level three systems available today that are making and assisting drivers making our roads safer. As the technology evolves, however, the biggest hurdle isn't necessarily the technology, but 
companies developing the right business case and meeting the right regulatory compliance in order to scale this out domestically and globally. So essentially, it's not just, uh, you know, uh, that we achieve level five and that will come. It's just uh, we can benefit from this set of technologies that autonomy is exploring today. Absolutely. Maybe in uh, some ADAS functionality to make the ride safer mm -hmm. or to make the ride more comfortable. Another part that I really like from Torque is their focus. They are focused, really laser focused on highway, tracking, point A to point B and execute perfectly and safely on that. What are the most important technologies that you can see emerging from the customers right now? Yeah, great point. So for Torque Robotics, it's not just a hardware challenge, but a complex software challenge as well. As the hardware improves, so will the need to accurately label the data mm -hmm. to train the deep learning algorithms and the need to validate all the various scenarios on different types of roads on every driving condition imaginable. So this is going to take petabytes of data and millions of miles of simulations. We launched uh, at Remars uh, uh, this uh, new extension of our AWS SageMaker tool that is generating synthetic data to help back then to, maybe you are encountering a construction zone in a highway and you want to amplify that use yeah. cases as much as you can through synthetic uh, generation of scenarios in order to deeply understand that safety case and, you know, keep consistency. And what's our role in all of this? How we can help? So the key here is scale. And for customers like Torque, it's important to use the right amount of storage, compute, and GPUs to validate these neural networks. And AWS offers the most amount of storage, compute, and GPU services on the planet helping customers accelerate their development in a cost-effective yeah, way. Of course. And even in the Tor case, they were talking about uh, terabytes of data collected. So the problem is in the order of petabytes of data that needs to be stored, stored and you can imagine, transferred and computed in re-simulation exercise. One more thing. So we see uh, this trend of the car going outside the car a bit. Right? So it's not just a single product that stays together, but Electric vehicles need to talk with the infrastructure mm -hmm. to optimize energy distribution, production, uh, to store the energy, act as a battery sometimes. So how do you see this trend? Are the customer perceiving this additional layer of you know, services that can, be, that can interact with the vehicle itself? Yeah, absolutely. So there are three exciting trends that I see across the industry right now. First, it's software-driven experiences from purchasing the vehicle online to configuring and pre-ordering to smartphone applications that allow you to remotely control your vehicle to the infotainment system and all the capabilities there with maps and navigation and music. And second, what I see is the monetization of these software services. So customers can pay for connectivity to connect their vehicle. They can upgrade their advanced driver assistance systems for self-driving features and then they can download applications. And then lastly, what I see is the continuous improvement and continuous delivery through over-the-air software updates. Yes, that's fantastic. So software-defined experiences, Absolutely. love it. Yeah. So thank you so much, George, for this point of view and uh, for your experience and for the good work you're doing with our customers. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Thank you. Let's reflect on some of the important breakthroughs that the autonomous trucking industry is experiencing. To start, it is crucial to stay focused on the core tenets while also having a clear strategy to scale out. Next, it's all about the data. Start with querying, enabled by services like Amazon Athena, and make the analysis available to the different stakeholders efficiently. Finally, while SAE levels provide guidance, especially for higher level of autonomy, we can already capture part of the value providing safety and comfort functions in vehicles now. Thanks for joining. See you next time.